Welcome back. Today we're resuming our test of the Dehancer plugin on DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't watched part one already, you can check it out in the links below or above here. And if you have, then let's continue. Halation. Now, halation is also another aesthetic thing. I had no idea they have so many of these different types of halations, like eight millimeters, super eight. Uh, these numbers are, uh, I am only aware these numbers indicate um, emulating how all film cameras used to produce this kind of halation effect, which is like a glowy, soft glow effect around your subject and also around your surroundings. So for, let's just put this for example, 35 millimeter, Super 35, no ramjet, amplify. Okay, here we go. Here's the, here's the most obvious part of it. When it's, let's put it at 76. Now if you look disable, enable, do you look at, can you see these, that subtle glow? Is it called color fringe? I can't remember, uh, no, that's not the term. Can't remember the term for it. It's a subtle glow that's added to some of these elements from her clothes here and the branches. That's a soft, shiny glow. And even affects her hair very subtly on her hands, on the edge of her hands. Look at that. Disable, enable. Slight aesthetic. Not so obvious on the overall picture. Okay, maybe now that you've seen it, you can't unsee it. Now that you've it, enabled it, nice. You've now given it a more vintage, yet retaining that romantic mood that we had, that we obtained earlier on from the film emulation profile, the Fujichrome Velvia 50. Bloom, you have bloom here. Oh man, bloom adds a little bit more glow to it. Okay. Wow. Film damage. Film damage. We enable it. Um. Oh, I see it. Without. And with. Okay. Let's maximize film damage here. Okay, it gives a subtle effect like how film images do when you could see fragments of black or white spots flash through the image as you're watching the movie. If you've ever seen old movies, then that's how it looked like, especially the black and white films. You'll definitely get see those little artifacts very subtly. It'll, it it jitters, it appears. So that's film damage. Okay, got it. Film breath. I'm not sure what it does. Let's turn it on. Let's lower the impact. Nothing. It's doing something on the scopes. Not very obvious. Gate weave, I believe is, it sort of zooms into the image a little bit on the display. And doing something on the scopes here gives like a little more of a shake like a handy cam movement there's some jitter jitter there if i turn it off there's less of it okay gate type gate shape have perforation these are very technical terms that um, only the experienced people who've worked with film cameras before to make movies really would, would understand how it affects your digital clips and, and it's sort of an imitation to real film cameras. It's a wonderful aesthetic. It's a nostalgic, some use the word cinematic. I think now the word cinematic, it touches on many different aspects of cinema. I don't think that's a fixed definition of a cinematic film per se, but I will have my own thoughts on that. Uh, I'm not gonna share all. <laughs> I'm not gonna share all my thoughts on that here, but that's what 
the dehancer emulation is meant to be. Let's enable this overscan here. Oh, wow. Now this is nice. Adding this frame here. And this frame at the sides to animate as if you're using real film. Oh, okay. This is pretty straightforward. Nice. Offset is reframes the clip on the Y, on the X and Y axis, up and down, if you're not sure what it means. The zoom, of course, cropping in how much you want. This is imitating a Super 35 film, Super 16 film. It looks like this. It looks a little bit more cropped in the frame. Ultra 16 is like a flipped Flip the version of that effect. Wide screen, duplicating the uh, duplicating the image width on the top and the bottom of the frame. Film orientation, horizontal. Now this is useful for a music video or like a flashback scene. Hmm. Flip. Okay. Static gate. Gate defocus. Not very obvious what this does. Focus. Yeah. All right. A vignette is also another subtle thing you add, which is um. How do I say it? If I lower the feather, there you go. Lowering the feather, you can see the obvious ring around the frame. Let's increase the size here. Exposure. Let's make it dark and then the feather. Change the aspect ratio, size. So this just gives another, it's another aesthetic where it feels like you're closing in on the subject a bit more. Adding a vignette helps to bring focus on your subject in a way. I'm not sure how to explain it, but it's, there was a phase like about 10 years ago where a lot of people were using vignettes and then it became a trending thing on their videos. I myself used um, vignettes on previous projects and to no real purpose really other than making it look nice, whatever nice was at the time. I have yet to figure out a right use for vignettes. I think it really depends on the context of your story. If it serves a specific purpose to your story rather than the image itself. For this context here, I don't think we really need it. Monitor, false color, clip indication. Not sure what clip indication does. Does anyone else know? Leave a comment down below. False color, I do know. It helps to give a range of what in the image is overexposed, which is on the reds, and underexposed, which is on the blue and the the dark blue here. If your subject is within the 50, the mid 50 chart here, it means it's much, that's where you want your subject's colors to be at, not overexposed within, within the top and the bottom areas. You don't want it to be overexposed or underexposed, so it's pretty straightforward. Subject, if you see the colors match 50, you are good to go. Right now it's, feeling a bit more underexposed in most places, but you're not clipping at the bottom nor at the top, which is great. This is ideal. Good reference tool. LUT generator. I'm not an, an, um, I don't always use LUTs and I think LUTs is just putting a kind of filter, bring out certain colors from the image to your taste. I'm not sure what these ones are. I think the options here, are about how fast or how slow a quality you plan to process the image here. Obviously, when I put high, it's definitely processing slower. If I put normal, fast, it jitters less. So there you go. Now we have from before the grain and now after all these effects.
Now on the input section here, there's an option to choose the camera as the source of your image. And there was an option to use Canon cameras. Now the options here do not have the Canon 90D listed. Obvious, for obvious reasons, it's more catered to the newer, the newer market, the newer cameras, the RF uh, mounts. Surprisingly, it has the M50. Now, I'm going to turn these off and see what these, do, what these do. If I chose the M50, which I think is the closest one to the closest camera next to the 90D format. And I'm going to work with this. Let's move this up. Works pretty well too. You just got to, I think from here, you just have to readjust these pointers and it still looks it still looks fine will these curves blow it out i think it does yeah and these work and this works just as well for the can id beautiful just like my wife Okay, what we're going to test next is the vlog from the Lumix S5, which is the camera that I'm shooting on right now. And thankfully, it is within the choice here. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so if you like what you've seen so far on the Dehancer Pro plugin, you could get yourself a 10% discount using the promo code The Catholic Artist. Links are in the description below, and you can use it for your software such as Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, and DaVinci Resolve. And hope you enjoy.